This is episode 231 of the Andrew Hines Real Estate Investing Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Control and Compound Financial. They teach real estate investors how to multiply their wealth using infinite banking strategies. For a complimentary wealth coaching session or to learn more, visit www.controlandcompound.com forward slash Andrew Hines. Welcome back to the show. Today I have Amy Leong and Ali Ballum on the show all the way from Vancouver, British Columbia. And uh, I've had many people over the years ask me to get West Coast guests on. And I think this is one of the first times that I've got them on face-to-face right here in the studio. So uh, I was grateful for them to, to make the trip out to come on the show and they were doing a couple other things in the area. And they were talking about, yes, their business uh, investing in pre-construction in Vancouver, but we really focused in on their international uh, investing focus, which they're doing now. So uh, Amy and Ali both acknowledge the challenges in the market, the challenges investing, uh, the challenges in investing in British Columbia in general, as well as in Canada in general. And they saw better opportunities in Arizona as well as in Cabo in Mexico. And uh, we talked about what they're doing to make their Airbnb strategy work in those locations and the fact that they're also getting their real estate license in those areas. Uh, So Ali's actually going to become a tax resident in Arizona. And uh, Amy is thinking about doing something similar in uh, Cabo in terms of getting her license, but will likely retain her tax residency in British Columbia. So um, it was a, a deep discussion on the strategy. Why do that strategy? And we also went through case studies on both markets, what they've done um, in those markets and how they're they're putting together anything from a six and a half cap to a 15 to 18 percent cap, uh, depending on the location that they're investing in. So um, there's a lot of potential out there. A lot more than just in uh, Ontario or just in British Columbia or just in Canada. And I've seen so many investors in my network uh, thinking thinking about going outside of Canada. And uh, that reflects in the guests you see on this show. Uh, this is uh, really a, a current show and we, we, we get current perspectives. So I really enjoyed this one and uh, definitely got uh, some ideas going in my head. So just before we get into the episode, I wanna remind you about the GTA West REI Meetup, which happens monthly. Make sure that you're in the group so you hear about our next event and get on the attending list. Uh, Very, very important so that we know our numbers. And also, if you haven't already checked it out, REI Hot Seat is where you go if you want to see me and uh, resident realtor Jacob Campanero breaking down current and on-market deals, as well as off-market deals, talking about how we make them work and uh, really digging in the numbers so if you want to see the spreadsheets if you want to see the different deals we're looking at uh, definitely make sure you're subscribed to that youtube only channel for now okay well with that being said let's jump into episode 231 with amy and ali hello and welcome to the andrew hines real estate investing podcast i have ali ballum and amy leong Uh, did i say that right yeah okay all right all the way from vancouver we are and I, I think there was a there's a backstory here, which uh, there was some back and forth. We were trying to figure out a time for you to come on. I didn't know that we were having to do it in person. So I just committed to like anything that Jane had sent over. And yeah. uh, and so Amy's like, no, Ali, we have to be out there for this. Um, you can't be in Arizona. I can't be in Mexico. So there was a couple yeah. cancellations there. Yeah, and I, I try and do that with this show. Like we rarely will do a Zoom uh, just because it's so much better. You know, you get a better vibe in the room mm-hmm. and uh, you know, really get to kind of dig in a bit more. So uh, appreciate you doing this. You didn't just come here for me, right? Well, we have a lot of friends and a lot of colleagues that uh, were kind of fighting over us, which is very nice to to see. But uh, we've we've been back to back since we got here. A little bit yeah. of fun, a little bit of work, some property tours. And yeah, yeah, maybe some too much fun last night, but <laughs> but you all made good. It here anyway. We made it here. Yeah, we're um, feeling good. A lot of people who are watching this and listening to this aren't going to be familiar with you or your backstory. This is going to be the very first introduction. So give me the the spiel, so to speak. Tell me what you're all about, what you guys do. Allie? (laughs) Um, So Amy and I have been uh, licensed realtors for over nine years now. And uh, mainly in the last four years, five years, we've become very investment focused realtors, Mm -hmm. I would say. Um, and uh, that led us over the last couple of years to um, transition into different markets, primarily in the U.S., um, in in Arizona, and then in Mexico, in Los Cabos, and Tulum. 
Yeah. So we actually met at our real estate course sitting side by side. And Ali in Vancouver. In Vancouver. In Vancouver yeah. Ali and I just kind of mm-hmm. hit it off. We have the same work ethic. And we hadn't found that a lot of women, young women per se, were investing in real estate. It was really mm-hmm. hard. So um, I looked at Ali and we kind of found out coincidentally that we both owned our own places um, and bought them at age 24 mm-hmm. and owned more and wanted to grow our portfolios. So the best part was is, you know, we kind of went our separate ways for about three years. Um, Ali worked independently. I worked with a mentor and another realtor and partnered with him. And then we came full circle. And then about five, six years ago, we fully partnered and we've never looked back. Um, and we've built a pretty extensive portfolio. And now we're so passionate about helping people and ourselves buy across border. Um, and then I've been listening to your podcast for many years. So to, to sit here, I was like, this mm-hmm. is so awesome uh, because it's just been such a journey for us. Mm-hmm. And we're, you know, really happy that we can help a lot of, you know, maybe a younger demographic, but also an older demographic, which we want to get into deeper with you today because we're really into our demographics of people like and our economics help. and yeah. who we help. It's very uh, specific. So, Well, I should be taking notes <laughs> on all the things I want to ask you about. I mean, we've got the international <laughs> element, uh, you know, the fact that you guys, you know, are you both like longtime listeners or Ali, you just kind of... I have over the last yeah. like eight months. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you, a few years there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's funny because like we'll have people on uh, on Instagram that my wife and I are like Instagram friends with now because they have kids. And we're like, how do we even know that person? <laughs> it's like one day they tweeted out or, or insta out that they were listening to the podcast and it went from there. Oh, that's Aww. great. Yeah. yeah, it's cool the connections you make this way. So uh, talk to me about like it's Vancouver is where you bought. That's where you started. That's where we both started. Yeah. Like and you bought your first home in Vancouver. First, so my first property at 24 was bought downtown Vancouver. For like uh, $3 million or something? No, actually at that yeah. time, I actually bought it for $335,000, which was absurd. How many square feet does that buy? 584 square okay, feet. Okay, so yeah, that's like, I mean, I'm not going to even call that reasonable, but yeah. yes, for Vancouver At the time it was in, yeah. in, in, 20, in 2009, yeah. 2010, that yeah. was reasonable. Like, that was going right, yeah. That was the going right. Mm-hmm. And my parents thought I was crazy. They said, why don't you buy you know closer to us? You can mm-hmm. get something for you know, 240,000, that's double the size. Mm -hmm. But my life was downtown Vancouver and I was working downtown Vancouver. And now that property today, um, I'm netting over $2,000 a month cash flow. So. Wow. Yeah, it's great. It was a great investment and I still have it to this day. Yeah. Good on you for holding on to it. Mine was suburbs. Okay. It was saving for five years, I remember, saving $500 a month. And. For five years. For five years. Wow. And it was right after the, it kind of took a little while for the the kind of 2008 crash mm. to cycle through to Canada. And I bought at the peak. Mm. And so it taught me at a young age that what is the worst case scenario? If you go through something, if you don't sell it, you're yeah. not over leveraged and somebody's either paying or, you know, you're cash flowing, you're okay. So mine actually didn't do well after I bought it because I, I didn't study real estate back then. I fell in love with a rain mm-hmm. shower head in the presentation center. Yeah. I'm like, this looks great. Naturally, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's wonderful. I like nice things. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I've never seen one of these before, you know. So it's funny looking back going, oh my gosh, that was the worst timing I could have possibly mm-hmm. bought. But no, it wasn't because if you keep it long enough, I use that to buy um, a detached house in North Vancouver, which is very, very expensive now. Yeah. Um, but it set me up for not being as fearful, maybe. So I actually look back and thank that little property. Yeah, like doing those those deals that lose or hurt. That's how you learn, right? And that's how I learned. Mm-hmm. And yeah, my my early investing was not sunshine and rainbows. It was just like pain. But I didn't have the community and I sure didn't know of podcasts. Like there weren't really the podcasts back then, especially not Canadian. And no. it's, it's a lot different now for people getting started. They have this huge safety blanket of a community, but the market's way harder now. So it's kind of offset. (laughs) Oh, definitely. And even the nice thing about Amy and I is when we met, um, like she said, we went our separate ways. We still did a lot of business together. So Mm -hmm. a lot of co-lists, a lot of referrals. And, but we had the same goals. So Mm -hmm. we were able to keep each other accountable, right? Like we both had the same goals, three properties by 30, 10 by 40. And we're almost 40 years old, but we've now, you know, surpassed that, that goal. But Mm -hmm. it's only because we have each other to kind of, you know, Mm -hmm. rely on each other for. And and 
even at, you know bounce ideas off of and, and investment um, scenarios and, and whatnot. To have a second opinion is great, right? And we've always been that kind of yeah. shoulder for each other. Yeah, that kind of community thing. Mm -hmm. It's like it's super helpful. There's like when you can talk to like-minded people. Yeah. And uh, so some point, you both decided that there was something beyond Canada and Vancouver. <laughs> talk me through that. I think it was after or well just before COVID we were still going to places along kind of the west coast we wanted sun you know it doesn't matter what age everyone thought you know the older mm -hmm. you are you're gonna go to say Arizona yeah you know, to or go Florida and, if or you're Florida out here, right? if you're out on the east coast and we just loved it so much and every time we'd go we couldn't believe the home prices <laughs> because you know we're sitting on our Vancouver perch going yeah oh well that's cute hmm. that rancher with a pool is you know half a million dollars that's what a little tiny shoebox in vancouver yeah. costs so it just started to really imprint on us and and then ali actually and i'll let ali talk about this um met her now husband in scottsdale and he was managing airbnbs for years and, and had a couple himself so that was kind of our entry point into the u.s market and we just loved going there and so did all of our friends to golf and enjoy and you know, Vancouver, it rains 180 days a year. Mm -hmm. And it was just amazing and just more plentiful cash flow. And the thing about the cash flow is, I'm not sure what your restrictions are out here, but in Vancouver, they have cracked down heavily on Airbnbs. So there used to be 15 to 20 condo buildings that allowed it. Now there's about five to seven in the whole lower mainland. Are there any and municipal restrictions on it as well? Like, oh yeah yeah you can only rent out your home and gotta be a, days it's a year. gotta be a primary yeah. primary um home so that's the thing mm -hmm. right so it took a lot of us out of that market and a lot of our clients are looking to us saying where can we get cash flow mm -hmm. where in another market can we produce what we were doing five you know five years ago here which we can't do yeah. now and so we were before the u.s going out to victoria going to Kelowna, and going into other markets where they were generating that cash flow, but then as the market kind of got, you know, more expensive and interest rates started going up, those numbers didn't make sense anymore. Yeah. Which is what brought us to Arizona and Mexico. So the US and Mexico decisions were in the past year, two years? About two years. Okay. But you had already been doing some Airbnb. So your husband's American. My husband's American, yeah. So that was And how long have you been married? We've been married for three years. Three years, okay. So you've done that. You already got the kid right in right away. Didn't wait. <laughs> oh, we didn't <laughs> wait. COVID, it was actually a COVID couple. And it wasn't even like an accident, but yeah. we're like, we might as well start trying. And yeah. and it happened first time. So yeah. Hey. Similar yeah. story for us, actually. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Because you hear these stories. It could take years. And that's why I said to yeah. Amy, I'm like, oh, probably be a year, maybe a year and a half. We got yeah. lots of time to build what we're building. And then yeah. next month I was like, okay. So <laughs> we're still gonna keep doing what we're doing. But <laughs> yeah, it changes things. It changes things for sure. Yeah. So uh you met four years ago then your husband? Like how yeah, long? So you met did. four, yeah. married it three years ago. Uh, so that's kind of the American connection. So obviously Arizona is a big piece. You're going to you're gonna start doing Airbnbs there? Is that? Yeah. So we want to start building. Are. We are. We already have, yeah. um, Amy and I together have a couple of Airbnbs, my husband and I as well. And we want to continue to build our portfolio there. Um, I recently passed my school and state exam. It was very mm -hmm. hard. I did it in five weeks with <laughs> the the craziness back home. Mm -hmm. And so I will be um, fully licensed there, hoping by by middle of September at the latest. Okay. Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah. Uh, so we'll be active in the market. You can't uh, you can't do that without either a visa or a permanent green residency. Card. Yeah. You have permanent residency down there. Yeah. Already? So I just got my pre-approval. So quickly. <laughs> so I got my pre-approval. You don't waste any time. I know. <laughs> I've got my pre-approval. Um, I'm just waiting on my interview, which hopefully will be in the next three to six weeks. So you could take the course, weeks. but you can't register without the social so, yeah, security so I, number. So I, yeah, you're not actually supposed to be able to write the um, state exam without it, but I was able to um, persuade the head of Pearson School. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, so I was able to, to take that, pass that, and then I can't be registered until I have my, my paperwork, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, hey, that gets you going. So you're gonna mm -hmm. you're gonna move basically. We're gonna be spending six months of the year. Six months, and then so six months less a day in Canada. To exactly. Not, yeah. So then, state tax in in Arizona is favorable compared to uh, Vancouver, much more favorable <laughs> yeah. than BC. I'm assuming. It is. Yeah. So we'll be our my husband and I will be doing our taxes and declaring them yeah. in the U.S. Yeah. Yeah. U.S. tax residency like 
like if you compare, you could be an Ontario or any of the province resident, any of the states almost beats it, and except maybe like New York State and maybe California. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a couple other examples. I'm no expert on that, but like say Florida, no state tax. So you're going to be like top bracket 39% at the federal level. Yeah. And then nothing on the state level. What's uh, what's Arizona? Is that small, it, small tax rate for state? It is. It's yeah. it's it's very similar to that. Yeah. So, also, it's like not not a huge one. Not say. a huge one. Not yeah, all. the thing like I've heard, I was just talking to some Americans the other day that are from Texas and they're like, well, everybody loves the no income tax, but, co you know, come look at the property tax and their, their property taxes are insane. Yeah. You know, just like a regular house will be like 12 grand a year in property tax. See, that's one of the things that yeah. we loved about Arizona. And when we were looking at different markets, um, our house, even one of the houses that we have together, our property taxes are 1600 for the year at a $755,000 purchase price. Yeah. Okay. So you win there. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think that we might as well just go through some Arizona numbers. And so 750, that was, is that like the first one? So that's the first one that Amy and I did together. Yes. Okay. You're doing it together. And how are you buying these? Are, like, are you buying it in a LP GP structure? Yes. Or? Most of our clients are buying in an LP GP structure. Okay. But this is the one that you guys did personally. Yeah. We did it in our personal names. We, okay. this one was a the trial one per se. Um, this was our learning curve. So we don't buy anywhere. Um, we don't sell anywhere until we've yeah. done it ourselves. So we actually yeah. were the guinea pigs for this that makes um, sense. Arizona adventure. It makes sense that you're, you know, you're involved in it if you're, if you're going to be selling it to your clients. Exactly. Uh, it makes you much more credible as a salesperson to, uh, to have that scenario. Uh, okay. So purchase price of that one. Let's just go through it. Was how so much? So seven fifty five. Okay. And then did you have to do any improvements or? Zero. Okay. What about like staging, decorating, all that stuff? Yeah. So staging actually, Amy can I talk did. about that. <laughs> well, we're very resourcefully. We furnished everything for, it was $15,000 and it was a three bed mm -hmm. and that was indoor and outdoor furniture. Okay. And well, what's Three what's bedroom seven, with a pool. Yeah. Three bed pool, uh, like decent space for outdoor activities and such. Or? Yeah. It was amazing. It was actually quite a, yeah. a, a large lot. How big was our lot? I think it was uh, around 7,500, 7,800 square feet for the lot. Yeah. 7,500. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what that works out to like dimension wise, but is that like like a 50 by 150 or something like that? I would say like 50 by 134. Okay. Okay. Kind of around there. Yeah. yeah okay. by 50 by 140. Okay. So going to put it up on Airbnb. You guys have done your research to make sure that it's going to smash, I'm sure. Well, we had a, an interesting criteria at first before we started really honing in on everything. And mm -hmm. if anyone knows about, you know, the downtown kind of old town and, yeah. you know, the day clubs and it's really fun there. Right. Yeah. Um, so we wanted to be pretty much within a 10 minute radius of Bottled Blonde, which is one of like the most fun kind of bars. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of one of the criteria in prime zip codes that we had kind of pulled from AirDNA. Okay, so you had done mm -hmm. your research on AirDNA yes. to find out what was performing. And what's a house in that neighborhood typically do on a year? Is it like 100 to 200 uh, and in that range? No, anywhere from about 75 to about 130, depending okay. on depending on how many bedrooms, how many right. people you can sleep. Okay. Um, if it's been decked out for, you know, for ladies only and it's a, it's a bachelorette house, yeah. some of them we've seen do 170 to 180 a year for a similar okay. size house that's what do you think you'll do based on what you've done so we can go because we've had it we, we've had that for a year okay so we did last year we did eighty three thousand. Eighty three thousand. okay we had a bit better interest rate yeah your interest rate so our, been better yeah we probably. were five percent interest rate yeah okay so i'm gonna go ahead and just throw that in now and did you finance 80 percent? we did 25 so 75 25 25 yeah. Okay, so seventy-five percent financed out of thirty gram. Yeah, and five percent. Oh, that's not bad. And no. this was done through like what a prime institution, like a it, Canadian institution that operates down there. Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah, like RBC or TD or something. Yeah, so a lot of them do it. So RBC, BMO, HSBC. We yeah. found the two best are RBC and BMO that we've worked with. RBC and BMO. Okay, good to know. Yeah, I've heard RBCs worked. I think my mother-in-law used TD uh, okay. in Florida successfully. I've just done private so far but yeah. uh yeah we'll, we'll come to that eventually i'll probably end up just using a private fund because they'll do amortized loans as well so uh and they don't ask questions <laughs> beyond <laughs> like, like show me yeah. cash show yeah. me you have cash show me you can afford you know like 
So what do you, uh, you said how much in tax? 1200 for the year? 1600 1, Just over 1600 for the year for property taxes. Okay. And then insurance is going to be a bit more with Airbnb. Yeah. So our insurance, I think, was like 1543 for the year. That's really not bad at all. Nope. And that uh, was for, for a vacation rental. Okay. Then maintenance, I got there at 5%. Uh, that doesn't cover your cleaning and consumables. That's just sort of like wear and tear. I think that's yeah. appropriate. That's appropriate. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then utilities, what... Uh, I mean, you're paying for all of them. What do you figure you're in for? Yeah, so everything like yeah. garbage pickup, okay, uh, yeah. internet cable, everything is around like anywhere, depending on air conditioning, whatever, but anywhere between like 225 and 300, I would say. For everything? Yeah, garbage pickup is like water, 65. Sewer, everything? Yeah, it's like $90, $65. Yeah. You do have to put in the pool costs because we. Yeah. Yeah. Had a pool yeah, so we can. Here. Oh, yeah. Sorry, that's. We'll put that in the landscaping. Yeah, category. landscaping. Okay. So, uh, but that's so just for in house. Twelve. So you're six grand a year in utilities and all that. Yeah. Uh, management. Are you paying management down there? So for yeah, it's fifteen percent property management. Fifteen. Okay, that's a decent deal. Yeah, we've worked it out, so that's great. Okay, so landscaping and pool. Uh, so pool and maintenance pool. is one twenty five a month. One twenty five. And then landscaping is, I believe it was one fifty. One fifty a month. Yeah, so about thirty three hundred for the two of those. Are you in an HOA? No, no. So no. none of those. Nothing fees. for that. Uh, then we've got uh, consumables and cleaning on all of that, right? So yeah, so it was a um, hundred. We would charge Airbnb one seventy five a clean, and it, ended, it was around one forty. So clean on top on of your eighty three was was the cleaning fee as well. Yes. Okay, so we'll just wash that. Then, yeah, pretty much. You can just wash we, it. We won't pay any attention. So consumables and cleaning were covered. Yeah. I like that. I mean, when I look at what comes in off of Airbnb, I'm just looking at the entire amount they put in my account. So then I have to work work backwards. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I got a miscellaneous there. I'm just going to put a miscellaneous for 500 bucks. Is there anything else we missed that would that should have been covered here? No, I think that's yeah. Yeah, about right. Okay. So at your purchase price of 725 plus, so 770, you're all in with the staging. Yeah, no, I would say because you, if you want to include closing costs as well, mm -hmm. we're probably in it first. It was probably about yeah, about seven eighty five. Seven eighty five. Okay, seven eighty five. So on a seven eighty five, that's showing at around a six point eight cap, and I'm sure there's upward mobility in terms of the amount of revenue you're going to pull in year two. Exactly. Are you like your super hosts now, or oh, we were yeah. within the first month or two. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so you've done a really good job of staging it. Um, I'd like to see it. Is there an easy way to look it up? Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I don't. We'd have to look at. Yeah, I don't know if we could. We won't worry yeah. about it right now. We can do it later. Yeah. Uh, okay. So just to, to finish the thought, so your mortgage payment looks like it's around thirty one, thirty two hundred a month. About thirty two hundred a month. Yeah. Yeah, and that leaves about twelve to thirteen hundred dollars in cash flow. About that. Yeah. On a monthly. Not bad for a first one that's managed and you're relatively totally. hands off at this point, right? Yeah, we were hands off on everything. Yeah. yeah. And we actually competed for that property. Yeah. There was like multiple offers. Other people wanted it. At the timing, yeah. like, and that's what we were just chatting about actually this morning with a friend. We're getting people now ready to act in the US, mm -hmm. but we do see it's going on a more downward trajectory for the next little bit here. Like it's already corrected quite a bit from yeah. last year. It has, yeah. but we're seeing it slow down even more. Like when we look every week for clients, mm -hmm. um, a lot more inventory is coming on the market and sitting on the market. Interesting. Whereas four months ago, five months ago, things were selling still within, you know, 20 to 40 days. And now they're more like 65 to 80 days on market. Interesting. I'm seeing mm -hmm. it kind of go the other way in Florida. So it was bad in December and now it's starting to, to come back up. Okay. Yeah. So you you figure yours, it's probably gone down in value a little bit since you bought it then. Figure, yeah, figure exactly. Yeah. And, and in some of our clients, um, the nice thing about buying in the US, and I mean, mm -hmm. it, if you're doing private money, it's a little bit different. But once you've owned a US property as a Canadian for over, and you've made 12 mortgage payments, you can now start applying for US credit. So what they'll do is the banks will use your U.S. credit with your global income. So it's a mm -hmm. lot easier to qualify for that second, third, fourth property. Really? So yeah. even American banks uh, being a foreign national? Yep. I mean, in your case, you're just going to be looked at as a U.S. citizen. I will be, but that's yeah. not the case for 99% of our clients. And so um, a few of our clients right now that have owned for over a year are actually going through that yeah. process. Really? Yeah. And they're having success because I've just been, I've basically not even been trying that because. You should, I, yeah. Told, we've been told that, you know, it just won't work. <laughs> <laughs> We've been told by a couple of mortgage brokers that we work with. And so he's connected us with two um, lenders that are uh, like helping them with the process. And these are fully American lenders, not like your Canadian banks nope. operating down there. Nope. 
Wow. Yeah. Okay, so that's handy. So so the idea is build up your credit. You still you still have an international taxpayer ID. That, that would be the way you do it, right? An yep. ITIN. ITIN number. Yeah. yeah. And then you're still, but you're applying as if you're, well, you're still ticking off foreign national, you're right? Still, yeah, but, but you credit. have U.S. credit. And, there and are, that's what they look some for. Some lenders are okay with that. They are, yeah. Okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Yeah, yeah and just for, for uh, you know, noting it, uh, you are paying off 700 and, you know, 14 to $750 a month on your mortgage. So even if the property's gone down, you've paid off some of it. So Exactly. <laughs> and the cool thing is like that 5% is locked in. For 30 like, years. Yeah. I mean, the, in Canada, they create this ticking time bomb for the insanity that's happening right now by just put people into five-year mortgages at 2% and then, you know, surprise, here's 8% for your renewal. Uh, like, I think Canadians have been conditioned to sort of accept that as normal, but it's not. I, I don't know what other countries do. I know the U.S., they think it's insane. Like the people I've talked to down there, they're like, what? You actually do that? Um, because they down there, they just love to take their their 30-year AMs. And, oh, of course. Well, and, their 30-year term. Yeah. So. And it's so hard. We've seen a lot of clients struggling right now because they were in that you know 2.65 mortgage for five mm -hmm. years. And then six, seven months ago, they come and their mortgage is tripled. Yeah. Doubled or tripled. And it's it's sad to see, right? Because it's horrendous. People are paying an extra thirty, forty thousand dollars a year, sometimes sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year we've seen with some clients. And that's a lot of money when you've got a quarter of a million dollar income between two Yeah. within your family and you're paying an extra sixty thousand dollars a year. Yeah. Oh no, it's insane. Um I, I wonder about the effect of that because obviously we're gonna have in in the next five years, we're gonna have so many mortgage defaults, so many power sales and a lot of homelessness and all that stuff and and then offsetting that is all the people pouring in that still have money that are still somehow convinced that canada is the canadian dream you know like it's like the american dream where you know you can go make it in canada and to a degree i i totally think you can but it's not what it was and i think that the appeal of it has definitely gone down and uh, i was actually just talking to somebody the other day at my meetup and, and I, I just said, hey, the funniest part about all of this is people are so accepting of the fact that you have politicians who spent recklessly, like they stole your money when they printed money and they flooded all these dollars into the market. So they stole your money then. And then the consequences of them stealing your money is in a stat that they call inflation, which is the effect of them stealing your money. And then their response to that is rather than them suffer, <laughs> they jack the interest rates up to like a sponge, suck up all your extra money so you can't spend it. That's pretty much what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And we're so accepting of it. Um, where I'm going with this is it's still the same in the U.S., but not as bad. <laughs> I guess they'll still spend. But if you can at least have that certainty with a 30 year, that's a huge win. And just even we were chatting about the 1031 exchange that they have mm -hmm. and all the tax benefits and how mm -hmm. you can defer it. And there's just so many different, you know, loopholes mm -hmm. in the states where you can, you know, however many times your wealth, way different than you can in Canada. And so we're learning yeah. that, you know, inside and out right now. But Canadians really can't use the 1031 unless, no, no, unless they get yeah. tax residency down there. But it's just even for yeah. Canadians, like we we know Canadians that um, just have their tax ID and mm -hmm. they're buying as foreign, foreign nationals, but they're able yeah. to, you know, times their net worth by so much more than they can here in Canada, right? Because of just being more strict and, yeah. and all that. Oh, so. yeah. It's like, even without becoming a, re a tax resident of the U.S., which was like initially that was my plan. And now I'm, you know, I may do it, may not, but I'll still that'll still be the playground for now. Like I'm not interested in building in Canada right now. N not that I'm like we're, we're building our hospitality and we found another resort and we bought it. But uh, generally speaking, my focus is down there. I think that that's a you know, that's where where I would prefer to grow. And I think you're both saying that that's sort of where you're at too. Well, Mexico as well. <laughs> Mexico for Amy. Yeah, so but tell the, me about, tell me about that us, too. Yeah. 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 So Mexico and, and to kind of rewind a bit about, you know, obviously why we're here and why we're so passionate. We, Ali and I co-founded a cross-border program for mm -hmm. Canadians that mm -hmm. was, you know, it's still in the works because we were waiting to get licensed ourselves mm -hmm. and again, invest ourselves. So we understand it more from the yeah. top down. Uh, but Mexico was, big on our list because, you know, I've been going for pretty much every Christmas and New Year's for the past, you know, four years and just loved yeah. it. Um, a lot of Canadians continued, especially from Vancouver and the West Coast to go yeah. on a, you know, four hour direct flight to Los Cabos, Mexico. And 
it is North America's luxury playground. If you experience it, it like that's Cabo, the Cabo people talk about. Yes, yeah. Cabo versus Cabo. I got cor- well, how, I got how am I supposed to uh, Cabo? Cabo? Cabo. Cabo. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was Cabo. Yeah. Just from watching like Entourage back in the day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Great show, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> and just just the economics of it are just exciting, and they already have uh, like an international airport. You can get to like where where I invested personally. It's an eighteen minute, uh, you know, drive from the airport yeah. to my front door. Um, mm-hmm. The so you have a place there. It's it's being built and it's done in in January. Okay. Yeah, and so it is. So ninety five percent of the purchases are straight cash in oh, Mexico. Yeah. However, we yeah. we do like we. I'm about to go through the refinancing of that property mm-hmm. because they'll only let you refinance it one month to lock up. So you can put all your cash down. It's spread out in chunks. Mm-hmm. So I think we did 20% every six months. Yeah. And then at the end, they'll let you refinance up to 60% back. And you can't get a construction mortgage down there? No. I guess it's a lot different no. politically. Like there's in, their institutions are probably not as interested. They don't have private funds down there that lend. They do. So the funds might lend you a construction financing. Like that's what I've done in the US. I have a private fund that like it's very structured. Like that's what that's their business. That's what they do. Something to look into yeah. because yeah, I think we still need to look into that. Like our our main thing was kind of setting up shop there. We have you know our brokerage Angle Invokers. Um, they have eleven shops. That's your brokerage. In, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's the high end stuff. Yeah. 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 Okay. But, is that is that where you always were? Or? Yeah. We but, we've been oh, there nice. for the last four and a half years yeah. together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I always like to stop and like look at all the listings because it's like international. Just like yeah, it's, it's a global cool brokerage. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in thirty three plus countries now, over a thousand mm-hmm. shops. Just in Spain, Mallorca, there's you mm-hmm. know more than twenty shops on that island. So the goal um, is to obviously continue to expand globally. But for us, we still like to have that storefront, that shop in Paris that our clients take a photo of oh, yeah. in front of and send it to it's us. So yeah, cool. like when I'm in Naples, yeah. we're walking down the strip, you stop yeah. and you look at all, like they'll have like German listings there and stuff. It's kind of, it's just interesting to look at. It it's is. an interesting uh, brand, the way they, they do that. E- exactly. But uh, Cabo looks amazing. I'm just looking it at is. a photo of I it wish right I now. could show you my the property that myself and a bunch of our clients bought yeah. because some of them didn't even see the property yeah. and we we took them actually just last month. I I met a couple of of our clients and they had you know one of or the wife had tears in her eyes because she was like this is amazing. Does the dollar go way further there? Well, for, oh, it does yeah. For, Even for, in Cabo, being like what yeah, it is? for like four hundred four hundred thousand dollars, or you can still get some stuff for three hundred four hundred thousand dollars. That cash flows very very well. Yeah, and it but I mean when you think I spent four hundred thousand dollars on this and you see like it's a big place. Versus in Toronto, like four hundred thousand dollars, like there is nothing you can buy for that. We'll put so it hers this is way: four hundred thousand for three bedrooms. Yeah, it was four hundred and six thousand dollars USD, though. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. Um, and then closing costs are about five to six percent. Okay. Which is kind of like British Columbia with the five percent GST that we have. On all purchases. Of all, all new construction. Yeah. Yeah. And then it was 19 here. <laughs> yeah. Wow. We were just told that in the car. Yeah. Wild. And it's cheap yeah, for you. <laughs> for us. Yeah. Um, and it was 1900 square feet. So the price per square foot was only yeah. $260 a square foot. Where, okay. you know, I picked up the condo guide in Toronto today and at the peak it was 1700 a square foot for a, mm. you know, a newer yeah. condo, right? But I think to know it about is like the developer and everything to talk about because that was a huge selling feature for you and our clients. Yeah, like I because I stayed at the Viceroy, which is they it was rated the top hotel in all of Cabo for 2022 okay. and it rents for about 1200 to 1400 USD a night for a one bed. Yeah. Well, the same architect 3 minute drive away from that hotel was doing the one that I bought in for the pre-construction. So, yeah. but at 1 million dollars cheaper. Okay. And Ali and I over the years have done so well for ourselves and clients following actually luxury hotel chains. So How do you mean? Following? Just following knowing where like the St. Regis is getting built in Cabo right now. So you just go to where with... they're building a really nice one and then you set up your Airbnb around the corner? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. And how why what's the logic behind that? The logic is that you know, if you are a family or a group of friends, do you want to pay the 1200 or 1400 dollars a night? to stay in a one bedroom 
or three minutes away, do you want to get a three bed and den mm -hmm. villa? Yeah. With the same amenities. So we make sure that the amenities in the community have a pool, a pool yeah. security, oh, so uh, a gym, community pool. luxury. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this is like a, an apartment unit? Is yes, it? exactly. So it's a okay. one level apartment yeah. apartment yeah. building. Um, with It's it's located on a Jack Nicklaus golf course. Like It's so nice. When I'm there, I'm going, pinch me. This feels like it's not golf? real. Oh, I, I can whack something at top she golf. Can <laughs> golf. <laughs> Allie can <All> right. golf. <laughs> But I think it's important, yeah, because um, like Amy said, you can spend, get two rooms for $3,000 or $2,500 a yeah. night or go stay there for $800 a night or $650 a night, depending on what the nightly rate is. And you have like a kitchen to cook in and you've mm -hmm. got like this luxurious, you know, pool and amenities and gym, just like they have there. And it's like a five minute golf cart ride. To that yeah. same property. I mean, it's a no-brainer. Yeah, I can't wait to enjoy you, staying there with you're her. You're welcome to come. <laughs> yeah, can't can't wait. That would be awesome. I'm sure my wife would would be in. I don't know if I. She would uh, want to know if Mexico's safe. I don't know if she's well. She actually went on a mission trip to Mexico many Amazing. years ago. I'm sure I could convince her. It's so safe. I feel very very safe. We get asked that a lot, and. Yeah. It, it was built on tourism, Cabo. So. Yeah, if you stay in those little pockets that are, are tourist friendly, like, you know, I think they know that this is our business. We can't be having bad stuff happen in these towns because that it brings so much money into the country, uh, so much money into the cartel's pocket. So, they, you know, they don't want uh, that that going anywhere. Exactly. Is there there's no cartel tax where you guys are or is there a an not in tax not that yeah we don't <laughs> we don't have a cartel tax that i know about in gobo <laughs> i hope people can read between the lines of what i'm saying yeah <laughs> yeah it would be a real shame if something were to happen to your business we can we can offer protection uh, yeah okay so what's uh what do you expect that one to do so that one i based it on 67 percent occupancy mm -hmm. uh doing eighty thousand dollars gross so 80,000 is Revenue. at 67 percent occupied. Yes. So 80,000. Okay. And do you know what your taxes will be? Taxes in Mexico are ridiculously cheap. So it's about $300 for the whole year. <laughs> cool. Yeah. That's uh, the probably, one amazing thing is there. It's ridiculously cheap. Probably something to do taxes. with uh, the level of uh, services provided. I don't know. Man. I, I, I take the lower taxes, honestly. Um, yeah. So we <laughs> insurance. What uh, What do you think you're going to pay? Have you quoted that yet? No, but part of the the loan that I was talking about that you can finance as a Canadian Mexico, mm -hmm. they do do a five hundred dollar a month insurance. So I don't know. I think it's to do with life insurance, to be honest. But I, yeah, property insurance, different. I haven't looked. I'll I'll know in a, in a few months here. Okay, I so would put it at like three hundred maybe by a month. No, not not per month for insurance. Well, I mean, if you look at like look at loss value, like it, yeah. it, what would a comparable loss value on four hundred thousand dollars be? Um, well, actually, no, you're gonna have a condo fee that's gonna insure the building, like your actual condo on the unit itself. The, yeah. H, the HOA is three fifty a month. Yeah, that so one. that's gonna have its own insurance. So your insurance is probably gonna be like five hundred a year or something on that uh, to insure just like the interior of it and pay for liability. I'm making an assumption here, so we we may find out that. And I'm I not. have hurricane uh, windows. So you never know; my hurricane rate might windows? go down. <laughs> it well, probably I mean, will again, actually. That's a, the condo probably owns that. Does the HOA own that? Uh, uh, like we had to just pay extra, like eleven thousand. Oh, you paid extra, so it's not that. not a true condo. It's an HOA, like the building. But Correct. if it's an apartment, it's in a it has four to story. be a condo. A four story. It's a it's a, it's three levels. So it's like What's stacked. Or, yeah. I feel like the building is still like considered common element, right? Oh yeah. 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 Okay. So it's, then a, it's condo, an HOA. Yeah. yeah. HOA. Like we don't really have HOAs here. We have like they call them like it'll be a land condo if they don't actually own the building. Um, you guys can correct me yeah. if uh, if you know it differently. But um, okay. So we'll assume that you're paying you're paying that insurance in there. Uh, Three fifty a month. Kind of does that cover any utilities? Or are you still going to pay? You still have to utilities? pay your uh, utilities. So, so everything's separate. Like there's no centralized heating, cooling. Well, there wouldn't need to be heat. There probably. need to be there. There's uh, air conditioning, like central centralized AC, AC but for I, the whole building, or just for no your for unit? for the unit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you're probably. Do you have any idea what you'll pay utilities wise? Probably like a hundred and. Just, yeah, one twenty-five. Like, like utilities like are cheaper down there. They're very yeah. Everything is is cheaper in Mexico. I like the sound. I like the sounds of everything. <laughs> Why do you cheaper? think we're trying to get everyone down there? <laughs> yeah. Management. Do you have you been quoted? What are the uh, costs? Yeah, fifteen percent, just like okay. Arizona. 
and then there wouldn't be any landscaping. You're just going to have your, your condo fee. Uh, no, no pool maintenance, nothing like that. So, nope. Nope. uh, equals to three fifty times 12. So 4,200 a year kind of covers all that stuff. And then I'll just leave a miscellaneous in there and let's do the total numbers. So you said you're going to, you're going to be 430 plus your staging, right? Yeah. So I would put 25,000 for furniture. Okay. So we're going to go like 455 then. Is that sound about right? Yep. The four hundred fifty-five thousand. Well, this cap rate sounds better than the last yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> so this cap rate's coming in at twelve point five. Now that's a that's a better ballpark. I like that. Uh, so at you think sixty percent you'll finance? Yes. Sixty percent financed at thirty year M. Uh, so they actually do. Um, nine. There's there's it's nine percent. So th there's two different oh, ones you can. It's a different calculation. It's a different altogether. calculation. So, yeah. so this would be interesting actually to do the numbers with you. But it's 9%. it's nine percent interest rate, but they do it over ten year AM. Oh no, forty four percent for for oh, nine yes, years, yes, yes. Sorry, and then that's the other one. oh, it's a ten year AM. Well, ten year AM for four percent interest. Okay, that's probably what you'll do. Yeah, you will still cash flow nineteen hundred dollars a month. It's insane. So 10 year AM uh, at 60%, that's $273,000 mortgage. Uh, so your payment would be 27, like 50 ish. I mean, they may compound it differently. Uh, so it might, you know, give or take, but uh, based on the Canadian calculation, 1990 a month cash flow. I think what's important too is that basing it on 68%, and that's conservative. Like, I think a lot of mm -hmm. those we looked at were like 100 plus, but she mm -hmm. wanted to do it very conservative. And we wanted to do that for our clients as well, just to mm -hmm. kind of show them like, these are going to be realized numbers, but that's at 68% occupancy and they're all doing like in the 90s. So that gives so her there's a, lot a couple more months upward mobility. to live there yeah. and still do those numbers. Yeah. So you can you can use it yeah. yourself. So, you know, just looking at your return breakdown on this, you're obviously 12, you're 12% 12 cash. Um, I shouldn't say obviously, but that is the way it works out here. Uh, you're 12% you're cash on cash. So that's $23,000 in the year, twenty almost 24 your appreciation, if we figure 2% is nine, but even if you wanted to zero that out, I can tell you that it's, it's already showing... gone up about 30%. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> even if you had no appreciation, yeah. it's showing yeah. with the pay down and the cash flow, 25% return. Yeah. And then what about what, like, I mean, to any Canadian, this sounds too good to be true. And they would just attribute it to, well, it's Mexico and I'm not going to go to Mexico. So what are the, what are the biggest in people's minds barriers to going to Mexico? I think so. Again, if we just kind of rewind here, so 2012, we had 69,000 Canadians buy across border, and in 2021, right after COVID, that number dropped to 8,800 Canadians. So it's nothing new that that people have been buying across border, and in mm -hmm. Mexico, everyone is Canadian or American mm -hmm. because it's so built on tourism. Yeah, you're and saying foreigners. in those in those towns mm -hmm. anyway. exactly. So the yeah. a barrier that people always talk to us about is you know is my money safe you know how does mm -hmm. it work for taxes how does it work for yeah um just anything to do with um foreign income so mm -hmm. um do you get residency do you not get res residency how does that look like so we yeah. kind of have we built like our power team of you know the accountant the lawyer the finance people that will help them you know put as little money as they can down if possible but a lot of our clients um you know, safety, like we talked about, but anywhere can be, you know, there's crazy things happening. Even in Vancouver. downtown Vancouver, I, like Amy says, Amy feels safer in Los Cabos in the area where she bought it and that she does downtown Vancouver walking around. Yeah. yeah. So, so the yeah. barriers are just a normal thing, you know, but yeah. for us, the reason we pushed ourselves to go cross border is we started to see what cryptocurrency was doing in this you know, app called Decentraland and Sotheby's having an art gallery and you take your little avatar and you're, you start to buy real estate in literally the mm -hmm. clouds and okay. you're not seeing it and you're not touching it. Yeah. And, and we're going, okay, well, if people are doing that, why aren't we buying cross border in places that we know yeah, baby it's, boomers it's like real. our parents, yeah. they're all going down there, mm -hmm. whether they have arthritis, whether they yeah. care about politics or climate change or whatever mm -hmm. they're doing, people are, are moving their money mm -hmm. into places with better cash flow and a better lifestyle. Yeah. I think lifestyle is key. And like bringing it back to our clients that went down with Amy, who had never seen this property, Amy had let them know, listen, I'm buying in this development called Cora. They didn't know where to put their money. Okay. They're in their late 50s. We had just mm -hmm. sold their one bedroom in downtown Vancouver. And 
they wanted something where they could, they love Mexico. They're like, Mexico, this is wonderful. And so now they can spend two or three months a year down there and have, they're going to do cash because they're retired and they mm-hmm. want to have that extra cash flow. So they're going to get this cash flow every month that's going to allow them to travel the world when they're not staying there. Mm-hmm. And they're in this like luxurious playground, you know, in Cabo in an unbelievable resort. And they were they were crying. They couldn't believe it, right? So it's just mm-hmm. helping others show them even out around our ages, like you can change your lifestyle now. You don't have to wait till you're 50, yeah. 60, 70 years old. We can do it now and watch that appreciate over mm-hmm. the next 20 years and enjoy it in the meantime. And appreciation yeah. is key. Like the ones that we sold, we kind of had a rule, which is, you know, don't go over and above this amount. So for mm-hmm. us, it was don't go over $500,000 in this development because we ran yeah. all the numbers like you just did. And so everyone that bought was under four hundred and fifty thousand dollars and there you cannot buy in there now for less than six hundred and fifty thousand usd the same yeah. unit and the same one and a half plan. years yeah so one and a half years and i think that's the best thing that we've seen is in vancouver and toronto you can't put a shovel in the ground and build a condo tower for less than probably about two thousand dollars a square foot now yeah mm-hmm. yeah so there, you're buying at $255 a square foot to maybe $300 a square foot oh, yeah, still. It's, it's and I think good. what's important to know, though, is that since Amy's been going down there a lot, she's built these incredible connections that are VIP connections where they, Amy bought herself and then a bunch of other clients bought between 400 and 450 depending on what they mm-hmm. bought. And when they, the next phase of offering, exact same units were going for 485 mm-hmm. and then 550 yeah. and now they're 650 so just in the year and a half since she bought or two years she's seen two hundred fifty thousand dollars of appreciation mm-hmm. right where th- there we do have a couple offerings coming up and that's what we love to do because we're mm-hmm. getting in at the ground level mm-hmm. and there's that built-in appreciation for and it's it's what clients. it's supposed to be for pre-construction there whereas you know in vancouver we noticed it's more expensive for pre-construction than resale units okay so mm-hmm. so i want to talk about this uh, pre-construction topic because uh there's people who swear by pre-construction in my network. I've never been a pre-construction guy, but I, I like to hear it out as a concept and there's gotta be something there. Like, It seems to me that if you wanna play that game, you have to be analyzing what in what property appreciation has been over the years and applying that rate to what you're buying. And people will knowingly pay more than a resale unit. There's twofold probably reason. One, I mean, brand new is better than slightly used uh, in terms of maintenance and upkeep and condo fees and all that. Uh, but then there's the uh, the other side of it is that that they get to only put down partial deposits and they're calculating a return based on the partial deposits that they're putting down. It feels a lot to me like, I mean, I get it. There are people who like are listening to this that are just diehard pre-construction and that's the thing. And, and my good friend is one of them. And it just feels a lot like you're relying on that speculation. You're relying on it. So one thing I will say is that we have been very pro pre-construction for years. Mm-hmm. Amy and I have been buying pre-construction for the last 10 years. Like we pre-construction has been something that we've found very variable because it's always been on sale. Mm. So when we've been buying it, it was less than resale. It was less than resale. Yeah. And we were getting in at a yeah. VIP rate. Now it does not make sense because when you add but in the even, GST, it's the same people that are selling it, but they have to sell it at more because they can't build it for less. Right? It's the same developers you're yep. working with, the same people that making an offer. It's just now their price sucks compared to what you can buy for resale. Exactly. And then th- this yeah. is why Amy's like so amazing at, you know, looking at deals. And and for example, you can even talk about the the building, a couple buildings downtown where you can buy for a thousand less a square mm. foot. Yeah, the other one's gonna be brand new in three or four years, but you're buying more square footage for yeah. a thousand less just for a couple years old building. Sure. Like it's just, you know, it Yeah. Depends well, what people alley. want. But. So I used to work under Concord Pacific under their mm-hmm. umbrella. So I would usually buy in every Concord mm-hmm. building, but it was like almost at a staff type of entry, staff right? Discount. <laughs> so Ali actually got one of yeah. the the lowest priced condos in Yale Town at, at the time I was selling one of the towers. And, you know, morning time, very, very low price point. Pretty much by dinner time, it was you know mm-hmm. up eighty k more, or quite quite yeah. a lot of a difference. But again, if you've got those relationships and you've got yeah. those ties, then and you know it's on mm-hmm. sale because, like you mm-hmm. said, you have to study. Like we're quite, you know, we're data freaks. We love our spreadsheets mm-hmm. as well, and we know 
if you base it off of every peak we've had in the last, you know, say since 2016 when the market kind of went for its tear, we like to base things. We're the only realtors I think out there that whenever we do market evaluations for properties now, pre-sale or resale, we're looking five years ago. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is in downtown Vancouver, five years ago, Ali and I were selling one bedrooms in the same buildings downtown for more than they are today. It's five-year-old really? pricing in downtown Vancouver. If you've mm -hmm. got extra money and you're not relying on cash flow, it is one of the best buys out there mm -hmm. right now because it's been so flat for so many years. It's been flat yeah. for seven years. Wow. So, but you've got the pre-constructions going on, you know, for, we just sold one for $3,500 a square foot. Holy moly. So right? eventually we know it's going to yeah. not get that older stuff to get up to that, but it, we are going to see a lot of appreciation happening over the next five to seven years with that distressed downtown market because it hasn't gone up like everywhere else. Well, you got to, yeah. I mean, eventually water will flow to the lowest point. I mean, people's money will eventually go there when they find it a value. I'm not sure. What do you guys attribute that to? Like where, well, where are they putting their money elsewhere that they're not putting it down there and causing those prices to go up? I think just at post COVID because 2019 we had spec tax come in, vacancy tax yeah. and foreign buyers tax. So it just hurt. So it just hurt. Then you had COVID. And so people just wanted to get the went hell to the out suburbs. Of the city. No one wanted and, to be yeah. in elevators, touch anything other people were touching. Everyone yeah. went out and got townhomes or detached. Yeah. You know, forty-five minutes to an hour outside of the city. Yeah. You know, they didn't have to commute; they were working from home. So. And while I'm all for that, I mean, people just just went nuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We're gonna call a spade a spade. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> that too. That too. <laughs> I mean, I was still working like normal. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so so um, I'm curious what you think because. I look at the factors that affect Canada. I mean, obviously you keep jacking interest rates like this and sucking up people's money, something's going to break. Something, no, Nothing's broken yet, but they're obviously trying to break something because you are not going to force uh, appreciation or uh, you're not gonna take down inflation without causing a recession. It's just not gonna happen, especially to the degree that we had it. And I don't believe there's any pre precedent for doing it. So if they cause the recession and you know now we're gonna have, um, you know, higher interest rates, we're still going to have people coming into the country. So you have the opposing effects. The, the recession and the interest rate hikes are going to push values down and the people coming in are going to push them up. Where do we land? Do we stagnate? Do we do we go up? Like, what are your thoughts? I think for, for us, like, we do see, like, it, Vancouver again specifically because it's so landlocked mm -hmm. that really you can only go up. Mm -hmm. So we don't have enough detached homes mm -hmm. in greater Vancouver or even the Fraser Valley to take care of all the people that are coming in. We haven't even had that. Yeah, even for condos, um, and we actually were talking to, uh, well, the VP of, of Concord, and he was saying, you know, it is going to be in, in another couple years, the developers aren't buying the land or building out the land. They're holding on to it. But then mm. that's going to cause another cycle of mm. supply demand issues. So, you know, we think it's going to be a bit stagnant, especially in the condo market for the next like two years. Mm -hmm. And then by 2026, we are, we do anticipate it to go on a big run again because hopefully by then interest rates will come down slightly. Yeah. <laughs> what if they're up over 10% by that point? See, that's the thing. I we'll think... be in Cabo on the beach. Yeah. 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 yeah no. I mean, I think that's but actually quite yeah, possible. I think too, like I, I think our, um, every market in the lower mainland condo townhouse detached has dropped 10 to 20 percent in certain areas yeah. um in most areas um and it and, hasn't started to rebound at all and it hasn't started to rebound at all yeah. we're seeing it slow down actually quite a bit not things have rebounded here see they yeah, yeah so they they rebounded a little bit so it slowed down mm. and they rebounded a little bit now we're on the slower end of things again yeah um i don't think we're gonna have like a big correction by any means i just think we're gonna yeah. i think it's gonna be a stagnant run for you know, yeah. the next coming months, just to everyone kind of figures out a lot of people sure. on the fence are a little scared on where the rates may go. I think yeah. how far can our clients and, and other people, how can they keep up? How much longer can they right. go paying um, these yeah. 30, 40 extra thousand dollars a year? I just, and that's, that's the thing. Like I was even thinking for my own self, I have my North Vancouver house. Well, I had to Airbnb the basement. I had a nice gym down there post COVID, you know, the Peloton mm. collecting dust, but I had to convert it into an Airbnb. And I was so happy to do yeah. that because of the extra income. Mm -hmm. However, I think about people that can't do that. Like, what if they don't have that extra basement mm -hmm. suite to rent? And a lot of and, people don't. You know, it's such a heavy mortgage now. And it just yeah. went up, you know, 
last week. Yeah, so what's going to happen when they're, you know, so they're hitting renewals or the other people on variables. Yeah, that sucks. Uh, But say the ones that come into their renewals, like that's, it's inevitable that a lot of them are going to be like, well, ah, I can't afford it anymore. They just stop paying. And, uh, you know, they choose to to buy food rather than uh, pay their mortgage. Mm -hmm. And when those hit the more hit the market and in large volume, that's where I could see a a correction followed by a bunch of people who who have been knowing and waiting for this to happen, buy it all up and Mm -hmm. drive it back up. So exactly my thought is like no matter what it happens, you know, some very uh, clever uh, or well-prepared investors are going to in large I'm talking large funds I believe are going to come in and start buying things up for a discount and uh, you know that that's what's going to change the future I think I think we're going to see a lot more of centralized ownership in the future uh, you're going to have a renter class and, and then uh, you know what do they it's kind of like what the communism outlines you know you have proletariat and the <laughs> bourgeoisie <laughs> um, kind of like that yeah so I, I just I can see that that's sort of like the pattern well, and I could see, be wrong. Well, you can see yeah. in developers, they, they are choosing to do rental purpose only buildings now mm-hmm. way more yeah. than they were before. So usually they would, you know, f- do residential sales, right? They yeah. would pre-sell the building or they'd just flip them and have them for sale. Now yeah. they're keeping them yeah. and they're just renting them out. Yeah. So more and more is happening and they're just yeah. waiting. They're going to go. They say, you know what? That's fine. Rent's through the roof. Mm-hmm. It's been up 20% since last mm-hmm. year. We're just going to keep this building rent it out we're not going to demolish it yet and build a new you know tower because mm-hmm. the clients aren't there right now but they will be like but you they said, in will three years. be yeah. or the you know they're going to just wait these guys have huge pockets yeah. so it just depends on yeah you know on they have how the flex long. to do those kind of things right it, it, it affects the market it, it definitely does mm-hmm. so yeah i mean trying to predict what what's going to happen in canada of course it's difficult we can only examine the factors and then prepare ourselves for whatever outcome outcomes seem possible Definitely. And that's what I try and do. I try and look at what's possible and how am I prepared for it. And that's like us too. Like we don't think, um, we definitely see the market going up. You know, it always does over the long run. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just think there is going to be some opportunities. And there are some of our clients that have sold, that are holding cash, that are just waiting um, for the yeah. right time. Yeah. But like you said, when that happens, especially in Vancouver, when people start buying that up, the market's going to go back up again. So it's yeah, only so a matter of time. There's always people out there looking for a exactly. deal. And, and I think that that's where you have that competing force with the immigration. Uh, that's the wild card. So it's not unless we're going to see a situation where people start to see, hey, Canada is not all it's cracked out to be. And I read an article, uh, or I actually more just read the headline the other day that uh, there was less applications in first quarter of, uh, of 2023, which makes total sense because... I've even heard some anecdotal stuff of like people who came over here and they're like, you know, doing Uber Eats deliveries and, you know, they can't afford a place. And they're like, oh, why did we come here? It was better in India. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, you know, knowing that maybe we start to get less apps, but it doesn't mean we don't get the super wealthy coming over here where they know that they have enough money to have a great life over here. So um, it's a question of how long would it take for that momentum to shift? And I think it would take quite some time. so it's not that the sky is falling or anything like that. I think there's still great opportunity in Canada, but it is, a, is it the best place? Um, and I think that we've all sort of concluded probably not. At this point yeah. in time, yeah, that's why we are, you know, venturing well, think, into other markets. I think for us, it's, it's we like to think of things in, you know, demographics as we were speaking mm-hmm. about earlier. And we help a lot of people like first responders or people like teachers or Mm -hmm. the people that you know they're making good incomes the banks love them you know Mm -hmm. because they have the strong you know repeated t4a income yeah but they and they have some money saved say in rsps and Mm -hmm. they have maybe their partner and their dual income they have some kids but how do you get those people ahead and that's been kind of our focus is how do you pad their pensions later on because they're going to still reside in Canada, right? Yeah. How do you show them perhaps you can invest yeah. across border like you're doing with your wife and 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 can you make a better return and yeah. and and then have a better lifestyle? Give keys and, and to your friends and family, mm-hmm. go enjoy oh, instead yeah. of paying Sounds what a fam- what a family pays, right? So you're thinking Cabo well, showing, then. For well, them. and that's the thing. And one <laughs> yeah. thing to just yeah. say about Cabo is um, we've been recently introduced to a broker that will um, you can use your RSPs as down payment down in Mexico. Right. What? 
Are we back yeah, to we Cabo were, now? Oh. I know. Yes, we're back to Cabo. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're, you're coming over now. <laughs> but I'm just saying, right? So it's just opening up their eyes. And and for there, it's like you can't get anything here that's decent. Even in like uh, someone called us the other day said, can I get a condo in Langley, brand new construction for under $400,000? Absolutely not. But we can sell you something in, yeah. you know, Mexico or in the US that we can get you in that price point and it makes sense. So Yeah, so you can redirect them. Um, obviously, you have your license or you're going to have your license. Will you have your license? In so I signed everything in December when I was there okay. at the brokerage Snell Real Estate. So they've been operating in Cabo okay. for 25 years. We just had our 25 year yeah. anniversary. And so I just, I'm work, waiting for my working papers. And, and are you going to have a visa to operate down there? Uh, yeah, te so temporary residency. They'll give you temporary residency yeah, for yeah. what was the requirement to get that? So it, it's changed every year, but you can either do like I, I'm doing the insolvency route, like having cash. So if you're doing that, it's about thirty five hundred dollars a month for the last 12 months that you have to show that you have made every month in income down there. No, no, in Canada. No, so you show your, your bank yeah. statements to say, hey, I, I've been making okay, thirty so five hundred dollars a month. You can make money and then they'll be OK with that. Yes. And if you're a retiree, like my dad's doing it as well, mm -hmm. then you have to have $250,000 last time we checked. So are you going to move your tax residency down there? No, I'm just going to do the temporary. Yeah. Temporary. So you're still going to be a Canadian tax resident. Exactly. Can yeah. you but can you move your tax residency So you down can there? after uh, three to four years, I think it's mm -hmm. four, you can get like full out citizenship and yeah. like full permanent residency. But I wouldn't need to be a permanent resident of the U.S., nor would I need to be a citizen to get tax residency there. All I need to do is be there for six months plus a day. That's what we were talking about earlier. Yeah. yeah. And legally. And then, exactly. yeah. And then you also, there. I think there's something you got to do on the Canadian side to like renounce your residency. However, that you still have the passport, but you're not a resident. I'll be yeah. going through that next yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah, just because obviously you don't want to have the benefits of Arizona with the giant anchor of British Columbia. <laughs> <laughs> what? Come on now. <laughs> Although less yeah. of an anchor apparently from a new home tax. So that's, yeah, uh, <laughs> that's, uh, yeah okay. Um, and then for people who want to invest and not do any of that stuff and they just want to have that, that secondary place down there, uh, are they setting up a, a legal structure or? Correct, yeah. So are. and then when you buy in Mexico, you need to buy it in a trust. So that's kind of the way the trust. bank holds the trust for you. You own all the rights to that trust. You can, yeah. you know, resell that trust at any time, and it's it's you fully trust, deeded. Not the, not the real estate. It, the trust owns the real estate. But the trust has the has beneficiaries. Correct. So you're exactly. So, you're so I'm the new benefi beneficiaries. Exactly. So that's so how you sell on. new yeah. beneficiaries, and then the the buyer, quote unquote, would become uh, the guarantor on the mortgage. Cor well, yeah, or. Exactly. Or just buy cash. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so just, and again, okay. it's it's mostly cash down there. So the lawyers um, know how to do all that. Yeah, so when we have you're all buying the when you're buying this now, you're buying somebody else's trust. Like it's already Because there. it's pre construction. Mm -hmm. I'm just There's setting no up the new the, the new, new trust, trust. To buy it. Exactly. And But can, everyone owns in trusts down there. Everyone owns in trusts. Huh. Okay. Yeah. I know those are popular in Florida too for like home ownership. So own in a trust. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Especially if you have a family or Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, like the cross avoid. border trust that our clients use as Canadians to buy in, say, Arizona. Mm -hmm. They're setting up trusts right now for about seven to eight thousand dollars with our Canadian lawyer and from they can Toronto. Buy, they buy on either side with that, right? Well, it's just it's just better for bypassing probate if they have mm -hmm. kids, legalities. Yeah, trusts uh, seem to be a, from a legal standpoint. Trusts seem to be the way that smart wealthy people do it. So the, yeah, it's so not the, their kids death don't, tax, which is you know terrible yeah, to the say, kids but it's, don't it's go through yeah probate ridiculous. and all that. Yeah. 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 So if there's a way, I mean, I'm sure you can talk to your lawyers and accountants about how you can roll stuff into a trust. Exactly. And, uh, and what's yeah. nice down there is that um, like we've set up in Arizona or even just in the U.S. Mm -hmm. in general and in Mexico, we've got the lawyers, the accountants, the property management, mm -hmm. anything that you need to questions on, we can answer them or they can answer them so for you. have you. a full team that full operates team. in both, both places? Both countries. Or they're in Canada, but they operate like, I mean, from an accountant standpoint, are there Canadian accountants that can do the Mexican stuff? Yeah, so the one, um, well, they talk to each other. So okay. you still need two. Because I have, I have like, <laughs> I used to have like one office that did everything for me, the Canadian and the American stuff. I have that here. Yeah. He's actually out of, um, yeah. he actually lives out here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of those, but not necessarily for Canada, Mexico. Yeah, Mexico, yeah. we're still um, yeah. kind of getting more accountants to just yeah. be on board because not yeah. a lot. And that's why we kind of created our cross-border okay. thing. Because we need we need all of those for us Canadians yeah. that want to become snowbirds as early as yeah. possible. <laughs> so, question for you, Ali: Why 
why do Arizona if you see the numbers are better in Cabo? Because that's where I want to raise my family. Okay, so yeah. it's just that that's more like home. So. More home, yeah. And I bought yeah. in Tulum personally, and the numbers were just as good as Cabo. Yeah. So that's my first okay. Mexican investment. However, I couldn't get in early enough to Cora, so I would have done Cora before. But yeah. Um, but yeah, my next investment will be in Cabo. Okay. In the same development as Amy is just a little bit smaller property. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, it, it seems like you just adjust your numbers accordingly, but it'll still it'll still be uh, fairly profitable. It, like the deal you shared with me, is that still like possible or not quite that good, but still good? It's, it's it, it will be in the next Family Friends VIP one okay. we have. So you guys are getting in with some Oh yeah, we've got yeah. It's it's a couple amazing. more. It's amazing. Cool. And even in Tulum where Ali bought, you know, we didn't go over that because might not have enough time, but Tulum's another mm -hmm. amazing place to invest. And she bought a, a villa like a full out detached villa mm -hmm. three bedrooms with not one but two pools and she bought it for three hundred and twenty thousand dollars you can get that today and that will make 80 almost grand. 80 to a hundred thousand dollars what are you gonna do with two pools i don't understand i'll be up in one she'll be down <laughs> the kids, the will, kids be will be in one, one. <laughs> parents will be another <laughs> there, so it's just like a split uh, it's a it's was supposed to be two plunge pools but it's actually they made the pool downstairs a full-size pool so it's an indoor pool no no so it's there's a up on the rooftop there's a plunge pool okay. so it's a rooftop um patio plunge pool mm -hmm. and then downstairs off the kitchen is another full-size pool and then it's got a resort style community pool and gym this is tulum this is in tulum so yeah a friend of mine is uh doing a development in tulum and he's very stoked about the airbnb numbers the numbers are incredible we i said to amy i said we're i'm not gonna believe it until we see it firsthand because the numbers are insane like that but you said one, you bought this one i did you have do you own it yet we, so it's pre-construction, so it'll be oh, done in June. So okay. that's why we said we don't like, we've yeah. seen numbers and we've seen a lot of AirDNA results and other results of a colleague that we're working with down there and his client's results, but you can't say it until we've done it ourselves. So um, what's your what's your sense on what that will generate revenue-wise? About 80,000 a year. 80,000 at an even lower price than you had. So we're talking like a 15 cap on that one. 15 to 18%. Yeah, before mortgage. So if you before. just bought cash, 15 to 18% cash on yeah. cash. Wow. It's quite the sales pitch for mm -hmm. uh, for these. You guys must, it's just so easy to just come in here and just talk about it. And <laughs> meanwhile, people it. are it trying to do itself. complex math equations <laughs> to justify Ontario. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, like, again, I, I, you can make a deal work anywhere, mm -hmm. but it's how many of those great deals do you see coming across your desk in a day? And it sounds like there's probably a little easier to find down there. Anything you wanted to like just share words of wisdom, something we didn't cover that you wish you had a chance to say? Um, tell me. I think we went over quite quite mm -hmm. a bit, but I think just to tell Canadians out there, don't feel def deflated or de or defeated. I think a lot of the news is is doom and gloom mm -hmm. of for what's to come. We keep hearing us saying, "Stay alive till 25," and it's just really embedded in my head. Um, but there are other opportunities out there, yeah. and you just need to be creative. You need to structure your power team, and whether you know we go for a run here, a, a dip there, yeah. Follow your your economic fundamentals. Stay yeah. true to the algorithms that you should have with a good realtor in, in your back pocket. And go search for sunnier locations because that's where our parents and, and the inheritance mm -hmm. wave and booms coming and get ahead of it because mm -hmm. you want to be that Canadian who does that before the big wave that is coming. And it's, yeah. it's coming. That transference of wealth that's happening or going to happen the next five to 10 years. Um, there's trillions of dollars that's going to be passing yeah. down, right? And so I don't think people are realizing that, why, that mm -hmm. which is why, you know, the doom and gloom. Yes, we might see a little bit of a doom and gloom over the next 10 months, have a run here, you mm -hmm. know, throughout Canada, throughout, you know, North America, yeah. but it will eventually go up. And like to Amy's point, make sure, you know, if you are getting into investment real estate or you want to buy your invest first investment purchase, you're working with an investor you know, investment focused realtor, yeah. not just any realtor that's going to say, okay, well, I can get you into that project. Make sure they're running the numbers, make sure they know yeah. what's going on, right? Like you, you need to be with an educated um, realtor that has your best interest at heart. So yeah. That's yeah. important. Yeah. Well said. I mean, you want to work with somebody and work with a winner, mm -hmm. work with somebody who just, you know, goes out and does it like they actually do it. They do it well. Um, there's just uh, it's an intangible. You can't describe how about valuable that is. Um, and I've done that in my my career as an investor. I always made sure I work with good people. So awesome. Okay, where can people find you and learn more? So our Instagram, we're quite heavy on Instagram. So I'm Amy Ames, which is A-M-Y-A-M-Z-Z. -Z, and Allie is Allie Ballam. So A-L-L-Y-B-A-L-L-A-M. 
and uh, you can go to amyandally.com and that's uh, kind of all of our <laughs> what we're up to and awesome yeah thank you okay. so much for having us yeah, thank you yeah my pleasure is great uh, meeting you and learning all about this this is great so yeah we'll share that contact info in the uh, show notes and, uh, yeah next time you're uh, you're in town uh, I'm picking you up from the up. airport, Andrew, and yeah. Cabo, Cabo and giving you the best real yes. estate tour. Cabo would be great. Yeah, yeah. Let's, Can we let's make it soon, please? Yeah. <laughs> okay, sounds good. All right. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. There are a lot of people out there talking about the infinite banking strategy and whether or not it makes sense for them. To find out what it's all about and if it's a fit for you, visit controlandcompound.com forward slash Andrew Hines, where my audience can gain exclusive access to books, podcasts, and webinars tailor-made for real estate investors.